All right, today I thought I'd do a quick lesson on absolute value inequalities, and specifically we're going to talk about special cases, which are really easy to determine if you're looking for them, but if you're not, it's really hard. Uh, not really, but sort of. Anyway, let's talk about absolute value first. It's kind of a reminder if you hear me chewing gum. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this really fast. Um, when I talk about absolute value, I'm talking about analyzing distance and not direction. We've talked about this before if you've seen some of the other videos. Um, we're talking about how far you go, not what direction you go. Well, negative and positive just represent direction. So when we have, say, the absolute value of negative 19, our actual value that we're looking for is just 19, because we only want to know how far it went, not what direction it went. On the other side, when I have positive 19, it's still 19. The key thing here is both of the answer choices that I have, or both the answers that I get, are positive. That's very important. That's how we're going to determine whether or not something is a special case when we have an absolute value inequality. Let's just do a quick absolute value inequality. And as you can see here, the answer is positive, so we can solve this one. And if you've been following along with the video set, or have been working these in class, or whatever you've been doing, you probably already have it half figured out anyway. Uh, we talk about uh, how a car goes. So this is the car speaking, and it doesn't lie. So I'm going to assume in one case that it's telling me uh, the truth and that it knows what it's talking about. So I keep the inequality and the number the same. On the flip side, I'm going to agree that it does tell me the truth. So 4x minus 3 is probably true. But I'm going to change that 13 to negative and flip the inequality over to less than or equal to just to prove to myself that sometimes the car doesn't know exactly what it's doing. Then I'm just going to solve these equations separately. Divide by 4. Since I'm dividing by a positive, I don't need to flip this over. And I get x is greater than 4 over here. Let's bring everything down. Really, handwriting in algebra is more important than anything else. I divide it by a positive, so I don't need to flip it over. So x is less than negative 2.5. So on my graph, I'd go down, and I'd make a line at 4. I'd circle it. Since this has a line under it, I'd fill it in. x is next to the bigger end, so it's greater, so it goes up. In the other case, uh, I go down to negative 2.5, which is probably somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3, if you're given a graph. I need to fill it in because the line underneath. And it's less than, so it goes to the left. That's your standard basic uh, solving absolute value inequality. Now, let's look at some special cases. You can immediately tell whether something is a special case based on that number right there. Uh, once you solve a problem out, if it's a little bit longer, say it had all this and then plus 3 over here, well, I'd have to get the absolute value by itself. But once you get the absolute value by itself, if the number that on this side is a negative, you are more than likely going to have to deal with what, uh, what's called a special case. Now, we said that an absolute value has to be positive. This statement says that this absolute value is somehow less than a negative. Well, a positive is never less than a negative. So if the absolute value, abs value, is less than or equal to a negative, you're always going to get no solution. Because no matter what you plug in for the value of x, it's still not going to make that absolute value somehow be smaller than negative, because we know that absolute values have to be greater than a negative, so that's impossible. So this is a no solution question. The other type you have to look for, another situation where I have an absolute value set up, it's all by itself, I've got a negative 5 here. If this is negative, look at what it says. This says the absolute value is greater than negative 5. Well, we know absolute values are positive numbers, so no matter what you plug in for x, it's always going to be true that it's greater than a negative number, no matter what the negative number is. So if it's greater, so if the absolute value is greater than a negative, you get all real numbers. And that's a basic setup for everything for an absolute value special case. If you have a negative, once you get the absolute value by itself, like I said, if this had a uh, minus 6 over here, <clears throat> outside of the absolute value, I'd draw a line. I'm going to add 6 to both sides. That's a different situation because you'd have positive 1 on this side, and you could solve it all the way out. But we don't have that. Once the absolute value is by itself, 
if it's greater than a negative, it's all real numbers because we know that absolute values are always greater than negative numbers because they're positive. On the flip side, if you get the absolute value by itself and it's less than or equal to a negative number, you know it's no solution because it has to be, there's no way that it could be equal to a negative number if it's an absolute value. Same thing if it's uh, less than, can't be. So those are the absolute value special cases for uh, inequalities and really not that hard to do. Just pay very close attention to this number. It's really annoying, by the way, if you solve a problem long form and then find out that this was negative in the first step, save yourself a lot of time. Less than or equal to, don't solve it. If it's negative, it's no solution. It's greater than, no uh, all real numbers as long as this is a negative. And that's all you need to know.